Brothers and sisters, we must understand that what we are doing here is not an immediate task. And what I mean by that is, as we go out and share the gospel, we can sometimes be far too short-sighted in what we're doing. We're sharing the gospel not so that we can say a week from now, well, look at how great Barberville is doing in Waynesville. We're sharing the gospel so that 10 years, 100 years, if the Lord tarries 500 years from now, that the fruit of what we're doing now will continue to transform this region for the glory of God. And ebbs of church history flow. You can look all throughout. You see the rise of the church in the New Testament. And it, and it grows to this pinnacle, and then they're pushed back through persecution. And then through all the eras of, of, of human history, you see this rise and ebb and flow. That where the church grows and rises, and then persecution pushes it back a little bit. But then the church grows and rises again. And every time, the sink down is not as great. I mean, the, sink, um, the, the climb up is, is greater than the sink down before. And the church continues to grow and to strengthen. And it's easy for us to look around today and look at the United States and think, well, woe is me, Christianity is shrinking in America. And it is. I'm not standing here today to deny the fact that it's shrinking. But guess what? Christianity is not just about the United States. Look around the world. In China, where the church is perhaps one of the most severely persecuted places in the world right now, the church is growing. Those people are standing boldly for the gospel. In places like North Korea, where it's profoundly illegal to be a Christian. The church is growing. Places like Africa, the church is growing. So we have to sometimes take a step back and look at the greater things that God is doing and understand that what Jesus is talking about here, he says, this is a long-term project. He says, but I'm going to be with you to the end. He says, I'm going to be with you to the very end. And the gospel is going to continue to transform this world. The gospel is going to continue to grow. And brothers and sisters, I don't look out at the future with with a dismal prospect. I look out at the future with great hope. Because I believe the gospel will continue to transform the world. And will continue to bring people to faith in Christ. And what we're doing right now here at Barberville, I'll be honest this morning. I don't know that we'll see the greater impact of what we're doing in this moment in my lifetime. It might be in my children's lifetime or even my grandchildren's lifetime. But that doesn't discourage me from the task because I want to see those things come to pass. I want to see God do another great awakening in America. But you know, the great awakening didn't start the month before it happened. It started because generations before had been pleading with God to do something. They had been faithful in sharing the gospel. They had been faithful in making disciples. And then God said, okay, I'm going to move. Jesus says, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the age. It's encouraging to me that as we look again at human history, that empires rise and empires fall. But if you look at that, who's always still standing at the end? Rome, the greatest empire the world had ever known, collapsed and fell around itself. But you know what didn't fall and collapse? The church. The church was still there. The church and the gospel was still there to go in and to pick up, in in, in idea, pick up the rubble and to carry forth with the mission of the gospel. Every place in human history, the church is the one that always stands through to the end and always will, Jesus says, until the end of the age.